Har has had a long-term relationship with Anonas, so I would really like him to like share his knowledge about all sorts of Anonas that he has come in contact with and studied over the years. So here's Har. This is a sugar apple tree, also known as sweet sap. The botanical binomial for it is Anona squamosa. And it has many, many other names all around the world. The earliest name that we know of was from the Taino Indians, or Native Americans, in the island of Hispaniola. When Columbus and his crew came over, uh, they soon learned the name for this fruit, which was Hanon, H-A-N-O-N. And soon the H was dropped, and people to this day who speak Spanish call this fruit Hanon. And from that name, we get the genus name Anona and the Anonesi family name. It is native to eastern Mexico from Veracruz down to the Yucatan Peninsula. And long before the Europeans arrived, it had been spread around the Caribbean islands and other areas of Central America and South America. The Spaniards and Portuguese then spread the seeds to Brazil and the Philippines and India and Southeast Asia and so on. So that was about 500 years ago. Nowadays we have all sorts of arguments with people from Brazil or from India who swear that uh, this fruit is native to their countries. Uh, in India, they even see things in sculptures that they believe are sugar apples. Must have been artichokes or something else like that, but uh, we, we know from the botanical associations uh, and the ancient records that sugar apples native to eastern Mexico. Uh, as the names suggest, the flavor of the fruit is very sweet. In fact, one usually cannot discern any other flavor in it other than pure sweetness. Some people notice in some varieties a little bit of honeysuckle flavor or a little bit of cinnamon flavor. In fact, the German name for this fruit is Kanilapfel. Cinnamon apple. The fruits have a bumpy skin uh, that breaks apart when the fruit is fully ripe. It's hard to cut one of these fruits in two because when they're fully ripe, they're very mushy and they just mush open. One best eats them with a spoon. Uh, there are many bright uh, smooth, shiny seeds, black seeds, uh, that are long uh, and cylindrical. The, the amount of pulp is kind of moderate to lowish because there are so many seeds. The flowering occurs in the spring and the fruits usually ripen from late July on into about September. Partly because sugar apple has been grown in so many areas of the world for so long, uh, it has many variations. Most of the ones grown in Central America and Florida are very juicy. In Southeast Asia, people have considered the juicy ones to be sticky, messy, and when some less juicy ones uh, showed up, uh, resulting from mutations, uh, those were preferred and seeds of those were consistently planted so that nowadays 
the sugar apples in most of Southeast Asia are of the chewy type that one can peel by hand and eat kind of like an apple without dripping syrup all over one's chest. This tree that I'm holding on to here actually is a seedless variety of sugar apple. A lot of people's ears pick up because they get annoyed about spitting out so many seeds. But I personally, unless I had a lot of property, would not plant a seedless sugar apple because they tend to split wide open and dry on the tree before they fully ripen and have a lot less flavor than the seedy ones. If you keep a close eye on them and get them before they split open but are mature enough to ripen on the counter, they're okay. Most sugar apples have a green skin when they ripen with a lighter color in the valleys between the bumps. Uh, some have a golden yellow color. We don't have many of those here in Florida. And some have a pretty reddish skin. There's the red sugar variety and there's the kampong mauve variety and the big red variety and various seedlings around without names. When you plant seeds of the red varieties, you can't count on getting uh, seedlings that will produce red skinned fruit. Uh, around uh, 10 or 20 percent of the seedlings will be red skinned and the rest will have reverted to the normal uh, green skinned form of the fruit. You can actually tell before the plants get around to fruiting, which is usually within three years, uh, but you can tell when the plant is about one year old whether or not it will be red skinned. In, in the winter, when the plant's been in the cold weather for a couple of months, you can take your fingernail and, and scratch the bark. And see this one is not a red skinned one and that bark is just as bright green as can be. But a red skinned one will have a, a pinkish color there. But in the summer it'll be green. But if you have a bunch of seedlings and you're wanting to know which one to plant out in the ground and you want it to be red, you can check in the winter to find out. As far as flavor, there's some variation in flavor, uh, but I can't tell difference between the juicy red ones and the juicy green ones. Uh, if I were blindfolded, I wouldn't know which was which. But if you really like the beauty of the red skinned ones, either you need to buy a grafted tree or go through the seedling selection process that I just mentioned.